All right, folks, uh, it's uh, about 10.30 in the night, uh, Memorial Day, and I just wanted to do a video that uh, um, describes a good way to uh, kind of work on your uh, three note per string scale sequences. Now, I recently posted a video similar to this on my um, uh, Totally Free Guitar newsletter. Uh, which you can find uh, by going to uh, www.secretsoftexasbluesguitar.com slash newsletter and um, it's further on in the series uh, if you've been with me for a while you'll probably see it uh, coming up pretty soon <clears throat> but uh, this is just something I've, I've come up with that uh, it's different sequences than I found, than I than I actually did on those videos and uh, just some, some things I've been working on myself the last few days mm -hmm. Excuse me, hit the wrong button there. But the last few days, and I'm not going to do a lot of talking and everything. I'm not going to do a whole lot of explaining, but this will help you, you know, get all, uh, not only your picking down, but your um, the coordination down with your fretting hand. Uh, I'm still using the uh, Jazz Dunlop Jazz 3. I've finally started getting used to that, and I've really enjoyed the sound that I get out of it, the volume that I get out of it, and the accuracy that I get out of it. It's very, uh, very accurate pick and uh, so let's get right on into this we're going to start and i guess the key of e minor since it's the lowest key that uh, we can do and i just put some uh, brand new strings on here that uh, ernie ball sent me i finally sat down and uh decided to um change these strings it's the first time they've been changed since november of last year 2013 and uh i just dreaded having to change these things because i thought it'd be a whole big setup process and everything like it was at the, at the first but I was told to change these um, one at a time and really helped. It didn't affect any of the, you know, the tremolo uh, where it sits or anything. It didn't hurt anything like that when I did it one at a time. So that really, really helped. Um, so I just changed the strings the same way I would tune them. I changed the low E, then the high E, then the low A then the, the B, and then the G, and then the D. And as I change them, I would tune them up to pitch, and then tune all the other strings, and then stretch it a little bit, tune them all again, and then I would do the next string, and vice versa. So that's what I did, I changed these strings. These are the Ernie Ball Cobalt Slinky. Uh, they sent me a pack of those when they sent me the, uh, the Everlast uh, Acoustic String. So I've been trying those, and hopefully I'll give me a review on these more a little bit later when I use these, but let's get right on into this. We're going to start with um, the key of E minor. This is, like I said, it's the lowest key, so let's go ahead and start. And I'm using just my flawless patch so that I can, you know, it can have more accuracy and more sound when you're doing these. So we're going to start with just a basic shape of E minor. And uh, starting on the second fret, we're going to be on the D and the G strings. We're going to go two, four, five, two, four, five. Okay, so, but there's a sequence I'm going to do. I'm going to do two different things. Uh, I'll show you the first one, and then we'll go on to the second one. And what uh, the general idea of this is, I want to go on the first scale shape that I'm on. And then do the same pattern in that sequence on the next shape of the scale. Oops hard to do when you get this eye. Let me start over. And um, let me see if I can turn this way and maybe you can see it a little bit better. We'll back up just a hair. Alright, so we're going to start up here and the sequence is going to be like this. So we're going to do this. Uh, it's the old Paul Gilbert, you know, thing that you've heard if you've watched the Intense Rock series. which Michelangelo Badio claims he invented and he started with. Uh, I don't know for sure on that one, but uh, anyway, we're gonna go uh, alternate picking wise, we're gonna go down, up, down, up. And that's gonna practice that when you're changing the string, that upstroke, so that you can get used to uh, changing the string as you're picking. And I'm not really going to go into detail about why that is. You can watch Paul Gilbert's Intense Rock verse, uh, Video 1. 
or Michelangelo Badio, uh, some kind of speed uh, video that he did. Not speed kills, but there's another one that's kind of similar to that. Okay, so, so we've got that much. Now the first sequence, I want you to do that three times, okay? Do this part, one, two, three. And then uh, you're gonna go, you're gonna come with your pinky and hit that highest note in the scale. Okay, so you're gonna come down, starting at the pinky, descending. So you're ascending here, come back down three times, two, three, and descending the whole scale. And so that's that up that uh, pinky is going to be an upstroke. Okay, so you're going to do that one time, or do those three, and then do that one. Go back to the three. Okay, and then that you're gonna do that twice and then the next one is just gonna be straight one of these and then one of these and then do that twice and then to start the last one you'll do what you did on the first part and I apologize if you can't see really what I'm doing with my picking hand I'm trying to get that to work together here so the whole sequence would sound like this. Okay, and then you can end on that high B there, that high B string. Uh, so you would gradually want to speed this up and also take it across the uh, all the shapes of the three notes per string in that scale. So just as for speed sake, we're going to speed this up a little bit. Then you go up the next shape and do that. Then the next shape, then the next shape, and this shape, so on and so forth. I think I actually learned the. Starting with that high note, uh, I think I actually learned that from Paul Gilbert, that little sequence. <clears throat> but um, I just created that little motif uh, by itself. So you got three of the regular and then a, and then three of the regular again, and then another of those, and then one of each, twice, and then back to the first part, three of uh, and then to end it. It's easier to watch than to have me explain it. So that's the, the number one um, number one um, sequence. The second one is one that I've been working on for a long time and it's just something to get my fingers <clears throat> used to playing these scale shapes and also a cool little sequence. It's, the timing's kind of the same but there's uh, a little bit of a difference in it, and uh, I'll show you where that happens real quick. We'll do the same thing, same scale shape, same key, E minor. Now that one's a little different, and what I'm, I think what I'll do is I'll just put down, instead of a lot of tabs on this, I'll just put down in the description just the basics uh, of both of these sequences, okay? Just maybe, um, this riff and then this riff and then you can combine them uh, to whatever suits you so uh, that's probably what I'll do in the tabs as far as that goes and then this one 
I'll probably do probably do that much in the tabs as well so because that's a pretty cool thing so but anyway this one again is now the difference between this one is you're not going to end on the and then automatically go to the, the sequence you're actually going to end on that G string right there And then you're going to start the sequence there. So the, the third upstroke on the G string, you're going to immediately go, uh, you're going to ascend it, ascend it. Okay, so you're going to send up the whole scale until you get to that pinky. And then here's where the sequence comes in. So the, the second half of that is. Once again, that's just something I came up with just for a cool little flurry of notes and to get my fingers used to the shapes. So it's uh, two, four, five, back down to two, up to four, back down to five on the D, on the downstroke. And you're keeping this finger up here on the two because you're coming right back to it on the second fret of the G string. So after the after that going after the two, you're gonna come back down and ascend the scale. It's the same sequence. You're going to do three regular and then again um, twice and then go back to the first part. So once again for speed, let's do it on the second shape here. That's going to be uh, four, five, seven. Always want to relate it back to the um, E chord, the E because it's the key of E. So I always want to relate it back to that. So I hope this has been a good lesson for you guys, something that you can use um, in your playing to help you get faster, to get better. And once again, this is all alternate picking. Now, as you progress, you can this the second sequence here. You can. You can put a little trill in that. If you want to, but just for alternate picking sake. That's what I would call kind of a turnaround, because you're kind of going forward and then it's it's causing you to descend. Forward, gradually coming backwards, then back down. Okay, so those are two sequences. I hope that you got a lot out of those. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, like, and uh, check out the websites Secrets of Texas Blues Guitar.com and Bluegrass Guitar Essentials.com for all things Texas Blues lead guitar and Bluegrass lead guitar. Once again, thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video soon, and I hope this video has helped you a lot. And try to experiment with this uh, uh, with clean channels as well. Don't just do you know all out distortion. Try a nice little clean sound, and uh, see what you can come up with. This is a very, a very clean and very reverby sound. <laughs>
Try with different pickup configurations. This is the uh, bridge in the middle. Maybe you can try switching it back and forth between both sequences. Okay, so just try different things with that and it'll really get your hands to guessing what you're doing and uh, get you a lot better at it. So thanks so much for watching once again. I'm going to get off here before I start rambling. I'm kind of tired. It is late. And uh, I hope you guys had a great Memorial Day. And I'm going to get on uh, get on the ball and get this thing, this video released to you soon. And it may not have a fancy thumbnail or anything like that. I don't know. But uh, I want to get it out there as soon as I can. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. God bless.